Hi everyone! In the last video, we explored how to create a cloud layer that drifted and changed shape over the course of the shot, and not only cast shadows onto the terrain, but received shadows from the volcano as well. In this video, we'll focus on the wispy cloud patterns that come into focus as the three aircraft break through the main cloud layers in order to create parallax and provide a sense of speed, motion, and distance traveled. For this video, we'll temporarily disable the cloud layers created in the prior videos in order to speed up the refresh rate of the 3D preview. Once the 3D preview has completely refreshed, enable the ray trace preview mode by clicking on the RTP button. We'll start by adding a mid-level generic cloud layer to the project and giving it a descriptive name like Upper Wispy Clouds. The generic cloud presets give us access to all the fractal noise patterns used to create the cloud pattern. These settings can be accessed via the Pattern button at the bottom of the Atmosphere node list. Before we begin to sculpt the shape of the clouds, let's reposition the cloud layer at an altitude in which the three aircraft can fly through parts of it. We can use the cloud altitude and cloud depth values for this. The cloud altitude value determines the midpoint of the cloud while the cloud depth value determines how tall the cloud layer is. By default, the cloud depth value is set to 150 meters for this cloud preset, which means that it will extend 75 meters above and below the cloud altitude value. Set the cloud altitude value to 3,050 meters. Notice how the display readout beneath the atmosphere node list for the cloud base minimum and the cloud top maximum is automatically updated to reflect the new value. Set the cloud depth value to 100 in order to make the clouds a bit thinner. We want to limit the size of this cloud layer so that it extends from about the edge of the cloud layers used to hide the aircraft at the beginning of the shot to just beyond the location of the volcano in the terrain. Go to a top view of the project and disable the ray trace preview mode by clicking once again on the RTP button. If necessary, zoom out a bit in order to see the dotted radius circle that defines the extent of the upper wispy clouds. In order to determine the proper radius value for this cloud layer, we need to see some of the other cloud layers in this project. So in the Atmosphere node list, select the three cloud layers used to hide the aircraft at the beginning of the shot and enable each of them. Reduce the size of the upper wispy cloud layer by setting the radius value to about 12,000 meters. Let the 3D preview completely refresh so that we can see each cloud's dotted radius circles, and also where the edges of the cloud layers actually are. Right-click in the 3D preview, and select the upper wispy cloud. Then, position and scale it by using the axis handles and its radius value, until the dotted circle encompasses the area we want. We ended up with a radius value of about 12,000 meters, and a z-axis value of about negative 6,300 meters. We can now disable the three cloud layers used to hide the aircraft and return to the camera view. With the cloud layer in position and scaled to size, we can explore the noise functions which define the shape of the cloud. Click on the Pattern button below the Atmosphere node list to open up the fractal noise settings. In order to enhance the feeling of speed and motion in our shot, we need to consider how fast the camera and aircraft are currently traveling, and then set the scale of the noise pattern for the cloud layer accordingly. Mach 2 is approximately 680 meters per second, which means that if we set the largest features of the noise pattern, the lead and scale value, to 800, then we'll pass through a cloud feature in just over one second. Because we're moving past the individual cloud features so quickly, we want to set their dominant feature scale in relation to the size of the aircraft which are about 20 meters in length. Set the feature scale value to about 75, which means that it will take the aircraft two or three frames to pass through a section of the cloud detail at this speed. If this value is set too low, the detail might change every frame, and this could appear as if the cloud were popping on and off. To visualize the noise pattern we're working with, click on the Shader Preview button to the right of the node name. The size readout at the top of the Shader Preview indicates one kilometer which is slightly greater than the distance the three aircraft travel in one second. Click on the Zoom Out button to get a wider view of the fractal noise pattern we're traveling through. 
Terrigen's Cloud Fractal Shader offers several types of noise pattern in order to create different looks for the clouds. These can be found listed under the Noise Flavor setting in the Tweak Noise tab. Try selecting the different patterns to see how they look in the Shader Preview window. For the thin and wispy looking clouds we're after, select the Perlin Ridges pattern. We want to tweak the settings in such a way so that each cloud feature has a brighter center that falls off into softer gray values towards the edge. Increasing the ridge smoothing value and noise variation value can help to define this look. Discovering the right combination of values to get the look you want involves a lot of experimentation. Keep an eye on both the shader preview window and the main 3D preview as you adjust the settings. These are the final settings we chose on the Tweak Noise tab. To help reduce the fractal-looking nature of the noise pattern, we can apply a warping effect, which will introduce some swirling motion into the pattern. Under the Warping tab, set the lead-in warp effect to 1 octave per lin warp, and the lead-in warp amount to 2. To give the cloud features a softer, transparent, and more wispy look, we can reduce the overall contrast and roughness values on the Density tab. Once you have a pattern that you like, exit the Cloud Fractal Settings window. Here's a render of the upper wispy cloud at their current settings. The clouds are at the right altitude, but appear quite dense. One method to thin out the cloud layer is to simply hide parts of it by assigning a shader as a mask. We can do this by using the Final Density Modulator setting under the Functions tab. Assign a new Power Fractal shader to this field and then open its settings by clicking on the green plus button to the right of the input field and selecting Go to Power Fractal Shader. Since our cloud layer is using the Perlin Ridges noise flavor to define its shape, we'll set this noise flavor setting to be the same, but we encourage you to experiment with other noise flavors to see how they might affect the cloud layer as well. We'll set the feature scale value and the lead-in scale value in proportion to the values chosen for the cloud layer's noise pattern. The feature scale value of the cloud layer is 75 meters, so we'll choose a smaller value, around one-third of this size, as the mask's feature scale value. The cloud layer's lead-in scale value is 800 meters, so we'll choose a smaller value, around half this size, as the mask lead-in scale. The shader preview reveals to us that the noise pattern consists mostly of values ranging from mid-gray to white. In order to be able to reduce the density of the clouds, we need to adjust the range of values so that it reflects a greater amount of dark gray to black values. Under the Color tab, reduce the color offset value to negative 0.8, which will reduce the amount of mid-gray to white values in the noise pattern. Here's a render showing the adjustments to the cloud pattern we've made so far. We can increase the wispy appearance of the cloud features by increasing the edge sharpness value under the main tab. To make the cloud layer fainter and more transparent, reduce the cloud density value to 0.025. Finally, we can fill in the cloud layer with more wispy strands of clouds by increasing the coverage adjust value. In this render, we can see our final settings for the cloud. Now, let's add another wispy cloud layer at a lower altitude in order to create some parallax between the two layers. To expedite this setup, in the node network, we can copy the upper wispy clouds hierarchy, then paste them back into the project. Double click on the duplicated cloud node layer to open its settings and rename it to something descriptive like lower wispy clouds. Connect the output of the upper wispy cloud nodes to the main input of the lower wispy cloud node. Then connect the output of the lower wispy clouds nodes to the atmosphere input of the planet node. With the Lower Wispy Clouds layer connected into the project workflow, temporarily disable the Upper Wispy Clouds by selecting the Cloud Layer node and pressing the D key on your keyboard. This will allow the 3D preview to refresh faster and also makes it easier to see any adjustments to the Lower Wispy Clouds as we make them. We want the noise pattern for the Lower Cloud Layer to be completely different from the Upper Cloud Layer, so open its Pattern button and change the Seed value by clicking on the Random Seed button. We want to reposition this cloud layer and for it to extend beyond the limits of the upper wispy clouds layer. So lower the cloud altitude value by about 500 meters and increase the radius value by about 3000 meters. Here's a render of both wispy cloud layers so far. 
At the lower altitude, we see much more of the individual cloud features. So let's reduce that amount by lowering the cloud density value to about 0.04 and the coverage adjust value to about 0.9. The wispy cloud layers look pretty good as we're traveling towards the volcano. But as the camera turns around and faces the other direction, the upper wispy clouds tend to stack up on top of each other because the layer is not very deep and this tends to form a bright ridge that obscures much of the dynamic looking distant cloud layers. The lower wispy clouds also extend too far into the distance and their uniformity tends to create a flat looking cloud layer. Let's temporarily disable the lower wispy clouds in order to focus on the adjustments to the upper wispy clouds. We can apply a shader as a mask to the upper wispy clouds so that we keep the clouds at the beginning of the shot and remove the cloud features that come into view after the camera rotates around the three aircraft. We'll do that by creating a new distance shader to be the mask for the power fractal shader that controls the final density modulator. In the node network, right click on the mask shader input of the shader used for the final density modulator. Select create new shader, then color shader, then distance shader from the context menus. A distance shader requires a reference camera in order to compute the distance and direction for the mask. Right click on the camera input from the distance shader node and select Create New Camera, then select Camera from the context menus. Change the 3D preview to a top view. Then click on the camera button on the toolbar to bring up the camera node list. Select the reference camera so that its properties are displayed and we can see the values change as we adjust the camera in the 3D preview. Rename the reference camera to something more descriptive like Camera Upper Wispy Clouds Mask. Right click on the 3D preview and select the reference camera. Make sure that the cloud and atmosphere button is enabled in order to see the cloud layer in the 3D preview. And if the cloud layer is too faint to see, temporarily increase its cloud density value to a higher value like 10. We're going to position and rotate the reference camera so that it's pointing in the direction of the clouds we want to mask or remove. To position the reference camera in the 3D preview, select the blue Z axis handle and drag it until the position Z-axis setting value indicates approximately negative 6,300. Click on the small rotate button below the axis handle to switch from translate mode to rotate mode. Then rotate the reference camera until the rotation Y-axis value reads approximately negative 65 degrees. Now that the reference camera has been placed in position and rotated, we need to tell the distance shader how to use it. Double click on the distance shader node to open its settings. The distance mode setting determines whether the mask will be applied spherically around the reference camera's position or planar in the direction it's pointing. Choose Z depth planar. Because we want to remove the clouds in the direction the reference camera will be facing, we need to swap the color values for the apply far color and the apply near color. Finally, we need to set the far distance value to 100 so that the mask ramps up from no effect to full effect or 0% to 100% over 100 meters from the reference camera. From the top view, you should be able to see the masking effect on the clouds. The upper wispy clouds will no longer be visible after the camera rotates around the aircraft and faces away from the volcano. Don't forget to return the cloud layer's cloud density value to its previous setting. And when you're done reviewing the changes we made to the upper wispy clouds, disable the cloud layer and enable the lower wispy clouds layer. If the lower wispy cloud layers appear too faint or transparent, temporarily increase the cloud density value to a higher amount. To break up the overall uniformity of the lower wispy clouds layer so that it doesn't appear so flat, we use a shader to mask the node being used for the final density modulation. In effect, we're masking one noise pattern with another but we'll give the new masking shader larger scale values than the ones used to modulate the cloud's final density. The result will be to remove or fade out portions of the lower wispy clouds layer. In the node network, right click on the mask shader input for the shader used as the cloud's final density modulator. Then select create new shader, then color shader and power fractal shader. Double click on the new power fractal shader and changes feature scale value to about 200 and its leading scale value to about 2400. Increase the amount of black values in the noise pattern by reducing the color offset value under the color tab to about negative 0.5.
The 3D preview should now reflect more open gaps between the cloud features, and we should see more of the terrain below. Now we can focus on removing a portion of the cloud features that extend far off into the distance after the camera rotates around the three aircraft and faces the other direction. We'll use a technique similar to what we did for the upper wispy clouds layer by adding a distance shader to mask out parts of the lower wispy clouds layer. In the node network, right click on the mask shader input of the shader used as a mask for the node masking the final density modulator. Select create new shader, then color shader, then distance shader. Right click on the camera input of the distance shader node and select create new camera and then select camera. Change the 3D preview to a top view. Then click on the camera button on the toolbar to bring up the camera layout and select the reference camera from the camera node list in order to be able to see the settings values as we adjust them. Rename the new reference camera to something more descriptive like camera lower wispy clouds mask. Right click in the 3D preview and select the reference camera. Zoom out until you can fully see the dotted radius circle of the lower wispy clouds layer. Make sure that the cloud and atmosphere button is enabled in order to see the cloud layer in the 3D preview. And if the cloud layer is too faint to see, temporarily increase its cloud density value to a higher amount. We want to create a mass that gradually fades out over a very large distance. So this time, we'll position the reference camera at a point where the clouds are fully opaque. Select the blue Z-axis handle and drag it until the position Z-axis value indicates approximately 9,500 meters. In the node network, double-click on the distance shader node to open its settings and swap the color value for the apply far color and the apply near color. Then set the far distance value to around 15,000 meters. This creates a mask with a color range from black to white or values from 0 to 1 that starts off white at the position of the reference camera and fades to black 15,000 meters from the reference camera's position. Return the cloud density value to its previous value of about 0 0.4 and enable the upper wispy clouds layer. By applying these masks to the upper and lower wispy cloud layers, the cloud features remain visible as the three aircraft break through the original thick cloud layers and eventually thin out as the camera turns back and looks towards the dynamic clouds in the distance. In our next video, we'll round out the sky and cloud environment videos by looking at the lighting tweaks and atmosphere settings used for the final shot. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.